hello. So, um, I'm back from England, obviously, and we're on the porch again because we've been currently living between our porch and our basement. But we're finally, we finally moved things back upstairs. So I'm back in my nice old bed. And I wanted to talk to you about two books that I read recently. First of all, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Helen. Thank you for clicking on this video. I have only read two books since we last talked because I'm a slow reader in the summer. I don't read that much in the summer. So, do you think I would read more in the summer and less during school, but being in my student house by myself, not having that much to do other than study, turns me into a major procrastinator. So, most of what I do is read when it comes to the school year. So, but yeah. I'm first going to talk to you about Best Enemies, which is number five in the Canterwood Crest series. The author of this follows me on Twitter. It makes me very happy. This is very good. I give it five stars on a reread. If you're looking for something that feels like Children's Gossip Girl, this is that. Children's Gossip Girl with horses. This follows our main character, Sasha Silver, she goes to this boarding school called Canterwood Crest and she basically has lots of boy drama, has lots of friend drama, but there are strong female friendships in this which I like. Sometimes they fall out over boys, but then they realize that their friendship's more important. So they choose friendship over silly boys and I like seeing the nuanced mean girl characters that aren't just mean girls, they have like motives and purposes, and I also like seeing the horse stuff. Uh, Sasha's horse is named Charm, and they're very cute together, they have lots of cute horse girl moments, and also... Sasha's a really good writer, so you just root for her the whole time, but you're like, don't get distracted with boys, but her boyfriend's also a horse rider. Is that a spoiler? Maybe. And so he keeps her on her game. They both motivate each other. It's just really cute. They definitely don't act like 12 and 13 year olds. They definitely act like they're in their mid-late teens. So suspend your disbelief, but it's just fun. It's a romp, it's a drama moment, and it's really cute. So there you go. The second book I'm gonna talk to you about is one that I bought in the UK, and that is Sea Creature Regrows Entire Body by Elaine Beckett. I finished this, started and finished it when I was in the UK, and I, yeah, they not even on Goodreads, which is really unfortunate because I can't review it and mark it and tell everyone to read it. Um, if you can get your hands on this, I really recommend it, especially if you're more caught up in like British politics than I am. There's not like a large, I would say like 20% of this like the references that the poetry made went over my head uh just because i'm not a politics girly like i'm a i vote but i start paying attention when it's time to vote and then i cut it out of my brain just because i have so little space in my brain for stuff so uh there were really beautiful poems in this i'm trying to find some really good ones. I really liked Finishing the Peanuts, which I won't read because I, it's very long, but that one's about Sylvia Plath, so that was nice. She does a lot of like literary references as well. Okay, I'll read you this one. A softness, lifted by an eider down, while someone snips the ties that hold you down is a way of trying to say it. Another way when swoon is not a word you want to use or drowsiness or bloom is maybe float 
float towards her, mid-air, half dying on the wing, towards a tumbling, breathy sound. She's kind of cute. There were definitely some, like, intense ones. So, like, trigger warnings for, like, she has a uh, climate, kind of climate-based poems or animal abuse-based poems. So there, there's one called Killer Whale, which has like an intense reference in it. So, oh, this one's really good and it's a bit long, so excuse, but excuse the longness, but I'm gonna read it. It's called Two Figures on a Bridge. Two figures on a bridge have chosen a background of shadowy fretwork to rest for a while, the way some people do when managing the heat. His tailored shirt, her chic black hat and pristine skirt at ease in the narrow streets. I watch from below a flight of ragged steps that lead down to an undercroft, decide to take a photograph, miss the second or two that I thought it would take them to kiss. They remain very still, leaning back against opposing balustrades, facing one another. Eventually, she tilts her head, he takes out his phone, she takes out hers, and in this amber light they seem a perfect couple content to wait for each other's communications while poised for some theatrical exchange. I imagine it will be in Italian, a dip in the hum of an air conditioning box resting high upon a window ledge seems curiously apt, quietly getting on with itself, while several blocks away beyond the lap of these impenetrable waterways, the afternoon begins. Water taxis surge to the lagoon. Thousands try to think how it would be if no one else were here. I readjust my lens. He's deep in whispered conversation now, while she breathes in, provides herself with small distractions, and I think, I used to have all this, this long knowledge of another. An older man arrives. She moves her leg, admires her heel, and shifts her hip. I click. It is hot, too hot to be feeling a fool, imagining love where no such love exists. I just thought, like, I think that's one of my favorites. There's, there's a lot of really good ones. And then this one's also really good. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna read you a bunch of these because I don't know that you're gonna have access to them, so let's share. Her way with avocados was not his way. She liked to split them round their middle as with a circular saw, leaving the problem of the seed to solve, then excavate one half and leave the other somewhere unlikely, next to the tap, halfway off a saucer, behind the kettle to go black. Depending on the place they were at, he found this dull, stubborn, idiosyncratic, lackadaisical, disrespectful of the fruit, footloose, endearing, funny, idiotic, ignorant of all things culinary obtuse. Then, one afternoon, a miracle. Months of wrestling with these pairs, and other people might be right, it might be easier to have them vertically, stock to tip once they are ripe. Moreover, her precariously placing of two half-spoon skins on top of the manna in the fruit bowl had Miro-type experimental qualities, which he liked. I just think it's cute! I don't know. So yeah, I'll definitely come back to this. I, yeah, I'll reread this and I'll like actually tab it and stuff. Um, I'm finally, my school finally has a creative writing program. So I'm gonna have my certificate. I'm gonna graduate with a certificate for creative writing. So I can do my creative writing masters eventually. And I wanna write poetry. Books are too long and your girl does not have the patience because here's my thing with like wanting to write it's like i want to write because i have a story inside me that i need to share not like you know when you get a thought like i want to write a book and then you like you're like oh i had this idea or like oh like i'll come up with a plot i just want to like have to exude words onto paper which is what I do with poetry so that's why I like writing poetry but I feel like and people write amazing books by planning and like all that stuff and coming up with plots but like I feel like if I'm not it's not true to me it doesn't feel like 
my story if it's not like something that I have to do like it's a compulsion because that's what poetry po okay poetry is like when I sit down to write poetry it just comes out of me it's not like something where I'm like what should I write a poem about oh I'll write it about this and usually if I do that it's not as good as if it just comes out so I also added a book to my TBR pile that's uh about how to like need to write which I like because I d and I don't know if this is true but uh, in the Mary Shelley movie Elle Fanning who's playing uh, Mary Shelley sits down and just writes Frankenstein all in one night and I don't know if that's true but that's <sighs> So basically, I just, that's how I feel, <laughs> that's how I feel, but I'm very excited to do my poetry certificate finally. School is in like a week, I don't know when I'll post this, but I'm very excited to be back, be back in my schoolhouse, and try it for the choir next week, I have my friend's wedding coming up, I have lots of plans, and I'm trying to get a job, and school so we're gonna be busy but it's gonna be really good so thank you guys all for watching this and I'll see you very soon